seconds and counting. Hey, what's good, guys? It's Clutch City Entertainment here, back with another video. And for today's video, we're going to be talking about the Houston Texans. I'm going to be talking about one guy in particular. And that one guy just so happens to be Texans head coach slash defensive coordinator, if you want to call him that, Lovey Smith. And Lovey Smith, he was handed a very difficult task at hand when he was made the Texans head coach. And I mean, he probably knew what he signed up for. He knew this team wasn't good. He knew that he didn't really have much talent outside of a few guys he really knew that he didn't have a for sure quarterback so he was as i said he was handed a very difficult task at hand so a lot of it isn't his fault but then at the same time it kind of is his fault i'm just gonna be going through some things that i don't really like that he's done this season and why personally i don't think he should be the next head coach next year especially depending on how the draft goes I think if Nick wants to go quarterback, then I don't think Levy Smith is the right choice to keep around for a head coach. I think he should go get one of those younger guys, one of those younger offensive guys. Personally, I don't want an you know, older, I guess, if you want like want to call him like a motivator type of coach or a defensive-minded head coach. I don't want that to pair up with a young quarterback that's going to be coming out of college, is very talented, that needs a guy that he can kind of relate to in terms of, I guess, game planning and all that. I would definitely want to keep Lovey around, maybe put him as like assistant de defensive coordinator, but I wouldn't want to have him running the defense. I'm going to be talking about why right now. And pretty much all season, I mean, we kind of knew this, but pretty much all season, he's ran cover two. And I mean, that's what he's known for. It's nothing new. Um, Tampa two, cover two, whatever you want to call it. And it's nothing new. But personally, I just... I mean, it's pretty obvious. It doesn't work. A lot of people have seen it. A lot of NFL analysis have seen it. The commentators are pointing it out in the recent Eagles game. They were calling it out in the Titans game. It just doesn't work. Tampa 2 is outdated. You can't have two high safeties. I mean, you can, but like that would be very, very talented. And as it's shown, there are safeties aren't talented in terms of coverage. Uh, Petrie, he looks lost back there. He's not being used to the best of his abilities. Uh, Jonathan Owens, he's just, he's just, he's not good, straight up, I'm sorry. He may lead our team in tackles, I'm pretty sure, but that's not a good thing. If you're a safety leading the team in tackles, it's because obviously the linebackers aren't doing their job and the defensive line aren't doing their job. So both of our safeties, I could, they're pretty much incapable of playing too high. And our corners, we're not playing to our corner strengths. I feel like Steven Nelson, he's done pretty good. Especially, uh, Steven Nelson and Stingley and Desmond King, pretty much all of, our, all of our corners have done a great job so far this season. But I feel like we're doing them a disservice and playing them something that they're not, I guess, if you say, as good in. In, co in college, at in LSU, uh, Derek Stingley, I'm pretty sure only ran like, I think, 36 defensive snaps in zone coverage. The rest he ran man. 36 snaps is not a lot at all. It's probably like maybe one game, less than a game worth of snaps. And when you you don't run that much zone in college and you're expected to run it like pretty much full time in the NFL, I feel like it slows down your development. I feel like it makes makes it too complex for you. I think you should just stick with one thing. Obviously, he's going to have to know zone, learn zone and whatnot, but he's doing it too much to an extent. I feel like we need to make it easier for him. Let him run his natural uh, coverage, which is man coverage, and let him do his thing. He's good at shadowing receivers. He has amazing ball skills, good breaking speed, good acceleration, good normal game speed, and we're making him run zone. And he looks kind of frustrated at times when he's running zone because he's just shuffling back, and the receiver runs past him, and then the receiver gets an easy catch, like 15-plus yards, and it's because Stingley's covering that shallow zone. And that's not, his, that's not what he's... That's that. We have Jonathan Owens covering behind uh, Derek Stingley at times. And when that receiver gets in between those two, ooh, it's, it's pretty much over. He's just going to run through Jonathan, Jonathan Owens or he's going to cast it over Jonathan Owens. It's not a good thing. And I guess it kind of helps our linebackers in Tampa too. That's probably like one of the best parts where it helps us is our linebackers because, I mean, we don't have the best talented linebackers to run man. I feel like if we were to run man with the linebackers, whether it's Kirksey, 
or whether it's Christian Harris. Not saying that they're not good, especially Christian Harris. I feel like he's been pretty great so far for the time he's played. But being a rookie, having to go man on man against guys like Dallas Goddard, uh, all these different other tight ends that we're going to have to play this season. Pretty sure we played Travis Kelsey. Asking him to play man on man with those type of guys is just not going to happen. So I guess zone helps our linebackers out. It kind of like hides their talent, I guess, in a way. But when we play the Chiefs, I feel like zone is really going to help us in terms of the linebacker core. But going back to the corners, uh, when you run zone, I feel like it's kind of like hiding the corners' abilities. It's like if you're scared, like if you were to have bad corners. I feel like Tampa 2 would really work for us in like 20, 2018, 2019. We were running through a, like a lot of just practice squad guys in our secondary. We had guys like Corey Moore at uh, safety. We had a bunch of just different guys that were not the best at cornerback, at safety. And we had like rookie sixth rounders, rookie seventh rounders, undrafted free agents in 2017, 2018. It just wasn't good. And I feel like if you're running, if you have that type of talent on your team, which is not the best, then you should run zone. It hides their their inability to play good defense. But when you have talented corners, uh, like, of course, Derek Stingley, Desmond King, Steven Nelson, Tavier Thomas, guys like that, I feel like you can run man. And it helps the safeties out too. Jonathan Owens, I mean, maybe put him in a single high. I mean, he's just a ghost running out there, I feel like, outside of the tackles. He's not that good in coverage. He hasn't really been ever. So maybe just put him back there in single high and help him like on deep routes, I guess. Like if somebody goes deep on Derek Stingley or somebody in the slot. Or maybe help him um, double team a tight end or something. I don't know, put him on the running back. And let Petrie just play in the box. Let him play his natural position. I guess he could play slot cornerback. But in our case, we have Desmond King and Tavier Thomas. You let him play in the slot. I mean, in the box. And Levy Smith, he just doesn't want to change. I think we've ran a little bit of cover one, a little bit against the Titans. And I think again, earlier this season, I think we ran a couple cover one last uh, against the Eagles too. But Levy Smith is just does not want to change the defense at all. And I feel like eventually that's going to get him fired. I don't even think it's going to be the record. Obviously, we knew we were going to be a bad team. We knew we were going to have a top pick. We knew we weren't going to make any crazy run, I guess. We are probably going to end up with three to four wins, maybe a max five. So I'm not really mad about the win total, but it's more so just the product that we're putting out there on the field. The run defense, I, we don't, again, we don't have much talent. So it's not, like, it's not like we can do much there. But it's just the inability of wanting to change stuff that's kind of outdated. It just doesn't work. And then again on the offense... Uh, Pat Pamilton, I feel like, Levy Smith, he could just straight up tell Pat Pamilton, like, hey, let's try something else. This obviously isn't working. Calling a screen on every third down isn't working. Let's maybe try something else. Maybe tell him, hey, let's get Mills running outside the pocket more, which I guess he did do a good job. Uh, Davis Mills did against the Eagles. Better job at running, uh, better job at extending the play, which he did a pretty good job, especially in that Chris Moore touchdown, scrambled out to the right or rolled out to the right and threw a beautiful ball. Very accurate. Probably one of his best throws of that game against the Eagles. Um, so I guess in that case, if he did really say anything, probably not. But I just don't think Levis Smith should be the head coach next year, especially, again, going back to that point. If we go quarterback next year, which is probably, in my opinion, fairly likely, um, I would probably give like a 75% chance. I mean, Nick Casario, he didn't really seem tied to Davis Mills. He didn't really like. I guess, lock in on him, if you will. I mean, I'm not, not lock in on him, but like when he's talked about him in the past, the season, during the bye week, before the season, he really didn't. He wasn't very committed to him, if you will. Casario knows what type of player you need to to go to the playoffs, to win a Super Bowl, and you need a very good quarterback. Look at the quarterbacks right now, of course, Josh Allen, Mahomes, Lamar, guys like that. You need quarterback, good quarterback play. And Davis Mills, I mean, He's done it at times, but he just hasn't been consistent. And part of it has been on Pep Hamilton. Part of it's been on Lovey Smith. Part of it's been on the lack of talent, offense, and defense. So, I mean, it's not all his fault, but he should still be, I guess, suing more, suing more than what you see right now. But, yeah, that's pretty much the video. I guess that's a little bit of everywhere. I was just planning on talking about Lovey Smith, why I don't think he should... Well, I don't think he should be the next head coach or the head coach for next season, but I kind of went off on why the defense has been not that good, why we need to change it, the offense just a tad bit. But yeah, uh, main points of the video, I don't think Levy Smith should return next year, whether it's a mutual agreement 
whether it's moving them back to like a maybe an assistant defensive coordinator spot or like a quality control spot. I also think we should probably draft a quarterback if Lovey Smith is to be moved on from head coach, hire a new young offensive minded head coach, let him, I guess, have the say in a quarterback, whether he wants Bryce Young or, or CJ Stroud or something like that. But yeah, that's pretty much the video. Let me know what y'all guys think. And I hope you guys have a good day. Peace.